Hello everyone and welcome to another assignment tutorial. This video will cover the week 5 assignment which is all about EVM which is earned value management. And to simplify what EVM is, I can say that it's an approach in project management that allows us to measure the performance of our project. So think of it as a status check or a health checkup for the project at any given time along the project's duration. And it's a quantitative type of analysis, which means it's supported by numbers. For example, if I'm the project manager on some project and someone asks me, how's the project going? Well, I can probably answer this by saying things like, it's going well, or we are behind schedule, or I can say things like, we might need more money than originally estimated. So these are all qualitative answers. And as the PM, I need to be more specific with my answers. And so I need to say things like, well, we are over budget by an X amount of dollars, or we are ahead of the timeline by an X number of days. So that's the quantitative part I was talking about a moment ago when I said that EVM is a quantitative analysis of the project's performance. And so in the week five assignment, you're basically given the scenario of outsourcing the testing of your application to a company called Test It For You. And initially, the company gives you the breakdown of the tasks, the durations, the resources, and how much they charge per hour. They also tell you that they will begin the project on the first Monday of the new year, which in our case will be January 3rd, 2022, since I'm currently recording this video in 2021. The assignment also explains that all tasks are to happen in sequential order following the finish to start relationship. Then a few weeks down the road, they send you an updated project information which shows which tasks have completed and how long they actually took to complete these tasks. So you will see that some tasks were completed as scheduled, while other tasks took longer than estimated. And so the assignment wants you to do a health checkup on the status of the project, given this updated information. You will need to answer some questions and submit screenshots of the EVM report and at least two other reports. Plus, the assignment asks that you also submit the project overview report. And please don't feel overwhelmed by this assignment because I will walk you through all of it step by step in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, as you can see from our textbook, in step number one, we are given the names of the tasks, the duration, and which resources are assigned to them. Then step number two is asking us to set a baseline, which I'll explain in a few minutes. And then it gives us the updates on the tasks, which shows the actual duration, and you can compare them to the estimated duration. Plus it gives us the percentage of each completed task. Now, the best way to approach this assignment is to first enter all the estimated data first, which means I will create a new project file and enter all of what's been given to me in step number one. And since you all have learned how to enter data into a project file from the previous uh, Microsoft project video of week three, I will skip showing you these steps as they are repetitive. Instead, I'll just skip to here. So from here, you can see all the data has been entered according to what's in step one. I have the tasks, which are organized and grouped properly using the indentations and summary tasks. I have the durations as provided in step one. And I have the start date set correctly for the first Monday of next year, based on my current year. And in case you missed to set the date for the first Monday of the new year, uh, you simply click on the pull down arrow next to the date and choose the date from this calendar interface. I also added the predecessors per the instructions so you can see that each task must finish uh, for the next one to start, which is the finish to start relationship. And finally, I added the resources to each task. Again, this is all based on the instructions of step number one in our assignment. And in case you forgot where I add the details of the resources, I simply go up here and then I click on the resource sheet. And this is the table where you can type in the names of your resources and how much they charge per hour. 
Okay, let me click on Gantt chart icon to return to it. And as you can see on the far right, this is the Gantt chart, which is just a graphical representation of the WBS, which is on the left. And you can see that tasks are linked together in sequential order using the finish to start relationship. So up until now, I have entered all the required data, which also up until now have only been estimates. And starting in step number two, the directions tell us to set a baseline for our project. So what's a baseline? Well, it's basically a snapshot of the project at a particular date. And why do we do that? Well, we do it because we can use this snapshot against future data of the project. And with this comparison, this will tell us the status of the project. For example, I will set a baseline now on the project since I entered all this estimated data. Then I will compare this estimated data against the updated information that is provided for us in step number two. So to set a baseline, I need to click on the project tab, then click on set baseline, then on set baseline again. This will open the set baseline dialog box for us. Here, the default settings is to set the baseline for the entire project. And we can also set multiple baselines. And instead of setting the baseline for the entire project, you can also set it for selected tasks. This might come in handy if you have a huge project and you want to just do a status check on a small portion of the project as opposed to the entire large project. But for this assignment, I'll keep the settings as is and press on OK. The only noticeable change now is in the Gantt chart. We now have two lines per each task. The bottom dark gray line is the baseline and the top line is the task. Now, they both are the same length because I didn't update the duration or the percentage completion of the tasks yet. And in step number two of the assignment, we are provided with this information. So I now need to input this updated information and I'll start with the duration. For the develop unit test plan duration, the actual duration is three days. So I need to come to this cell and I just need to type over the two days and make it three days. And when I did that, we can see that the Gantt chart shows that the task's actual duration, which is the top bar, has exceeded the baseline that we made a few minutes ago. So now do you see how creating a baseline is helpful because it allows us to visualize and measure the performance of our project? Pretty cool, right? Okay, so now that I showed you the first task update, I'll go ahead and enter all the updated duration per the assignment step two. And here we are with all the updated duration entered. And you can see how the Gantt chart has changed as well. The next thing we need to do is also update the percentage completed. And again, this is per the step two instructions. There are actually a few ways to update the percentage completion of a task. Probably the quickest way is to just click on the task you want updated. So let's start with the develop unit test plan. And then from the task tab, we can see these presets of the percentage completion. So we have 0%, 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. I'll click on 100% since that's what the assignment step two instructions asked me to do. And in our Gantt chart, I can now see that the top bar has changed color and the 100% now shows to the right of the bar. Another way to enter the percentage completed is to add a percent complete column. So I'll click on the add new column and it's the very first option so I'll click on it and now we can see the column is populated with the percentage completed numbers most of the tasks are still 0% since we didn't update them yet but you can also see that based on the update we did for this first task we now have completed 33% of phase 1 of the project and we also completed 5% of the entire project now, since I have this column, I can simply type the numbers in each cell like this.
And based on this update of these two additional tasks, now my phase one is 100% complete and my project is now 14% complete. And the final way to also update a percentage complete is to double click on any task. This opens up the task information dialog box. And from the general tab, you can see here is where we can update the percent complete. All right, so I will go ahead and update all the tasks with the proper percentage completion based on the assignment step two table. And here we are now with all the updated percentage entered into the WBS. Now with all this data entered, we are now off to step number three of the assignment. This part asks us to create an earned value report. And to do that, we simply click on the report tab, then click on the cost icon, and then earned value report. And boom, we get the report. But notice how the graphs are blank. And even these two values, which is the actual cost and budgeted cost, they're also zero values. This is an indication that something is not right and that we missed a step or two. And I did this on purpose as some of my students walk into this problem. You see, the first thing is step number three. It asked us to assume that the project status date is the second Wednesday in March of the following year. What does status date mean? Well, it's the date in time of your project that you want to use to compare against your baseline. In other words, what's the status of my project on that status day as compared to the baseline that I created earlier? The baseline will represent the budgeted or estimated information, while the status date information will include the updated information, which I entered just a few minutes ago with the modified duration and the updated percent completion. So to update the status date of the project, I'll click on the project tab. Then in the status group, I'll click next to the status date. And I'll choose the date that is the second Wednesday in March of next year. And then hit OK. Now, if I try to pull up the earned value report again, I should see some better graphs and numbers. So I'll click on the Report tab, then Cost, then Earned Value Report. There we go, much, much better. We now have populated graphs, and we also have actual and budgeted numbers. And since we're in the Report section, the assignment instructions wants you to submit this Earned Value Report as well as two other reports to help you with your analysis of the project. For example, you can use the cost overview report by going to the report tab, then dashboard, then cost overview. And this will display some information you can use in your analysis. And if you're interested to see where these numbers came from, at least for the earned value report, I can simply click on the Gantt chart icon. This area here is called the Select All area. And if I click on it, it selects the entire WES area. That's why it's called Select All. But instead of selecting it, if I right click on it, a menu of tables appear. From here, I'll click on More Tables, and then I'll double click on Earned Value. This will display the earned value table with all the detailed numbers you can use for your earned value analysis. For example, here are the two numbers that appear at the top of our earned value report. And this table also shows the scheduled variance uh, and the cost variance. This table also shows these three columns, the estimated at completion, the budget at completion, and the variance at completion. So the budget at completion is the planned budget we gave our project at the very beginning. The estimate at completion is the expected budget after we made the updates. And the variance at completion shows the difference between these two columns. So it seems that we had estimated that the budget for this project will be this value. 
but after we made updates to the duration, it seems our cost will now be this value, which means we are over budget by this amount. Now, of course, this is not ideal, but these are the numbers and that's what they mean. Okay, let's continue with what else the assignment is asking. And it wants us to include a project overview report. Now the assignment calls it project summary report, but Microsoft Project now calls it project overview report. So I don't want you to get confused between these two names. So I'll click on the report tab, then dashboard, then project overview report, and voila, we have a professionally looking report with some helpful information about our project. And the easiest way to get a copy of these reports so you can include them in your assignment submission is to click on copy report, which will copy the report you are currently displaying to the clipboard. Then you can go to your Word document, which will contain your analysis of the project, and you can paste it there. So I'll open a blank Word document and pretend this is your document where you would type your analysis of the project. And I will just hit Control V on my keyboard to paste what I just copied a moment ago, which was the report. And there you go, now you can see it here. So what I would like you to submit for this assignment are four reports, two of which are the earned value report and the project overview report, as well as a Word document. The Word document needs to discuss the topics in parts uh, 3A and part four. In summary, you need to talk about the status of the project and support your analysis with the reports you chose to show in that Word document. The idea or the goal of this assignment is to give you more practice in using Microsoft Project. So you will create a new project plan based on provided information, set a baseline, then update this information with actual duration and percentage completion. Then set a status date and do an earned value analysis to measure the performance of your project. So this pretty much wraps up this video and I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at any time. So thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in class. Bye for now.